France is very familiar with terrorism. If anybody out there has been following the news and uh, some of the things that have happened in France over the past four or five years, uh, they're very, very familiar with terrorism. And so I think that's part of why they're very focused on what's going on in Nagorno-Karabakh, Artsakh. All right. We want the world to recognize statehood. Look below me here. Statehood for Artsakh. Okay. This place up here. And I'm talking about that territory, not what's just recently been negotiated like that, the smaller section. And uh, I think there are signs that that's on the way. All right. Now, French Senate puts into vote, uh, Senate puts into voting draft resolution on need to recognize Artsakh. So we have been talking about France in a couple of these episodes, and that's important because France is one of the three uh, that are in the Minsk group, which is the oversight commission uh, that, that's supposed to keep an eye and keep peace in this, in this part of the world. And so with Russia, France, and the United States uh, keeping an eye out, um, this is all good. And for France to really be on top of it, 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 kind of balances things out because Russia is the one that negotiated the the, the current ceasefire um, that is actually lasting. Um, but uh, we don't want the balance of the influence over there to be Russia. Um, that, that's, that's not the right thing. So for France, we need the United States to step into. But let's uh, just read a couple of these things. Hours after the Paris City Hall has called on the French government to recognize the Republic of Artsakh, the Senate of France decided to put into voting a draft resolution on the need to recognize Artsakh. The Foreign Minister of Artsakh, Mas Maïlian, said, It has been has been signed by the presidents of the first five major political factions of the Senate, which symbolizes the common consensus in the French Senate over the independence of Artsakh. Okay, that's uh, actually kind of interesting. Five major political factions are in agreement because political factions, the whole, by definition, are not in agreement. So when you have competing political factions in agreement, uh, that's a good sign. Um Let's move on. So Pashinian and Macron discuss it. So Pashinian and Macron are uh, are in constant communication or in close communication. It's a couple of days ago. Prime Minister of Armenia Nikol Pashinian had a phone conversation with President of France Emmanuel Macron. As Armand Press was informed from the office of the Prime Minister, the situation in Artsakh was discussed during the conversation, obviously. <laughs> Both sides stressed the need to resume the work of the OSC Minsk group co-chairs in full format. They referred to the issue of ensuring safe rep repatriation for tens of thousands of people who had fled their homes in recent weeks and preserving the religious, historical, and cultural heritage of Artsakh. The need to maintain peace and diffuse the situation in the region was emphasized on both sides. In this regard, the Prime Minister Armenia noted the fundamental importance of international recognition of the Artsakh Republic. Okay, so this guy's on it. He's pushing it. And a bunch of this guy's, the politicians around Macron are pushing it. They're like, France, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's recognize Artsakh. Yeah, I second that. But not just France. Obviously, my goal, oh, by the way, subscribe, share, talking to you. Subscribe and share and comment and like. All of those things help the truth get out there. Okay. Now, I want to make an aside comment here. There's one of the commenters in, in the... Uh, in the comments on some of these videos, they're saying, you should be happy that war is over. It's peace. It's peace. Yeah, it's not peace. You think Azerbaijan is happy that Armenians are still in Nagorno-Karabakh, even as this says that tens of thousands are rep repatriating, like which means going back to their, their repatriation. It's going back to your home. That's what it means. Uh, and so it's a... Acknowledgement. This this is a territory that, though some are saying is rightfully Azerbaijan's, yet yeah, there are nuances in all of this. Um, Azerbaijanis have not lived in that region. They don't have ancient, like two thousand year old monuments, etc., tracing back because they don't trace back that far. Okay, I'm going to stir up some stuff that I, I don't want to step in right now. All right. 
So it's not just France, but look, EU highlights resuming negotiations over status of Nagorno-Karabakh. This is some European Union guy. I'm just going to read this quote down here. The EU considers that efforts must be renewed for a negotiated, comprehensive, and sustainable settlement of the conflict, including on the status of Nagorno-Karabakh. On the status. The EU therefore reiterates... Uh, its full support to the international format of the OSCE Minsk Group, that's Organization of Security and Council in Europe, or Cooperation, Organization of Security and Cooperation in Europe, and then Minsk Group, a subgroup of the this organization is the United States, France, and Russia, led by its co-chairs, those are the co-chairs, and to the personal representative of the OSCE chairperson office to pursue this objective. The EU urges all regional actors to refrain from any actions or rhetoric that could jeopardize the ceasefire. The EU also calls for the full and prompt withdrawal of all foreign fighters from the region. Hmm. Oh, let me just read this last part. The EU will follow closely the implementation of the provisions of the ceasefire, especially with regards to its modern monitoring mechanism. All right. So there are foreign fighters in the region. It's everybody's acknowledging this, that they, they need to be out. And this is hinting at... Uh, right here, the status of Nagorno-Karabakh, the European Union. Now, that's bigger than just France. France, obviously, is part of the European Union, and so they're, um, I'm sure, pushing this. And so, what is happening? Well, number one, the world is paying attention. All right, the fact that Russia had to step in to get the guns to stop firing. I just want to reiterate, <laughs> I maybe this is the first time I've ever mentioned it. No. <laughs> In any conflict, there is an aggressor. It's not ever two people coming up and saying, all right, let's fight. It's an aggressor saying, I'm going to fight you. And then it's the recipient of that aggression that's like, I better fight back or I'm going to be annihilated. That's it. And uh, (laughs) Nagorno-Karabakh has been there for millennia. Who cares about these different borders and territories that have changed? The border lines have changed over the millennia. Like, well, this empire is going to consider that mine. And this empire is going to say, no, that's mine. It's disputed. Okay, let's, you know, I'm not going to fight over it now. And now let's fight over it. All right. So (laughs) all those are Azerbaijanis. I'm like, that is legally the, you know, the UN recognized it as Azerbaijan. The UN's only been around since 1945. It's like, what? kind of authority do they have over this historic uh, site all right so um you know stop all that not you know, all my all these trolls turkish and azerbani trolls on the, in the comment section it's against the law the armenians stole this land they stole this land i'm like like do they really put those you know 1400 year old churches uh in that territory just in the past 30 years Right? Did they just move all those stones and, and, you know, relocate them from some other site? They didn't steal anything. They've just been living there. It's all these other supposed authorities that are drawing these lines. Right now, the European Union is like, hmm, looks like they're stepping in. (laughs) It's all good news. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to wrap this up here. But so help is on the way. It's going to be a refrain that I, I repeat because I, firmly believe that statehood for Artsakh not only is it the only solution uh, to this scenario, the only actual lasting peace that will ever happen is when the world, starting with the United States or with France or the European Union, I think the U.S. needs to step in, but when that happens, it's going to be a long-lasting peace. There will be some people that are very unhappy, but I'm going to do another video coming up that uh, kind of indicates that the powers that be I, I'm not sure that they have the willpower to uh, oppose what's coming, all right? So, and then uh, statehood for Artsakh, not only is it the only solution, but I think it's an inevitability, an inevitability. I think it's coming. All right, share, subscribe, and uh, like, comment, and click the notification bell.